Too fast, too slow. What's the right speed for turning a wood bowl? Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today we're going to cover the topic of wood lathe speed. Now I know this is a popular subject because I get lots of questions asked about wood lathe speed all the time. So we're going to go into great detail and explain what speeds you need to be considering at various points of your turning. And I'm going to have some really cool examples and I want to share something really fun with you. And I'm also at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you how and why I don't turn with an RPM readout. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. In the meantime, do me a favor and click that subscribe button. If you're not already subscribing, I've got a ton of videos on the way. Click that bell and you'll be notified when new videos come out. It's pretty common for turners to start off turning spindles initially. It could be some finial work or maybe pins, things of that nature, but end-to-end -end turnings of a rather small diameter stock. And when we turn spindle turnings, we can turn the lathe speed up pretty darn fast. And it doesn't really have that big of effect and it's not so dangerous. Part of the reason it's not so dangerous is because of the small size of the spindle stock and the small diameter. What happens is we can turn that speed up and we can make really nice smooth cuts. Now, here's the problem. If you decide to go from spindle turning to turning bowls and you want to apply that same principle of making smooth cuts by turning the lathe up as fast as it can go, that doesn't work for bowls. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why. Okay, let's take a look at this bowl blank. This bowl blank has already been roughed a little bit. It's got a little bit of shaping going on and it's very balanced. What do I mean by balanced? Well, it's symmetrical. There are no voids in it. So one side is not heavier than another side and it's going to turn relatively smooth. So now let's take a look at this. I had the lathe turned up to the speed that it was prior with the spindle, which was past the six. Now, best practices is you turn your variable speed all the way down. This brings up another point. I highly recommend that you use a lathe that has a variable speed control in it. And I know there are some lathes out there that don't have this. They are direct driven from the belt. What you need to be aware of is that can be very dangerous because essentially when you turn the lathe on, it's going from zero to its full speed. And if you have something that's not balanced or mounted properly, it can, be, it can go flying and it can be pretty dangerous. There are ways to modify lathes so that they can be variable speed and that's something to do. But if in general, if you can have the opportunity to have a variable speed lathe when you're doing bull work, it's going to be the best. So the best practice is to take your lathe speed all the way down to zero. Go ahead and turn it on and then slowly bring that speed up. What I'm looking for is any kind of vibration in the lathe. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of vibration there. But I've got a really good speed here for turning. I'm going to be able to cut a face cut across here. I can shape this bowl. That speed is going to be just fine. But look where I'm at. I'm not, I'm in front of the fourth position in this, on this particular setting here. I'm nowhere near where I was. I was on the other side of six, between six and seven when I was doing the spindle turning. Now there's a reason for that. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. So remember, this balanced bowl blank is just under four on my settings. Now let's take another, let's take a look at a different bowl blank. Okay, now this is a bowl blank that is elm. It's been rough cut with a chainsaw and the bandsaw. And I have, it's going to be a natural edge. And I have the top edge balanced the way I want it to look on the final bowl, which means I've kind of moved the base around. So one side of the base is heavier than the other. This is a great example of an unbalanced bowl blank. Now the way this works is, again, we take our speed down to zero. And I'm going to turn this on and just slowly work up until I see some vibration in the lathe. And right about there, I'm starting to get some vibration. So I'm going to back it up and look where I'm at. I'm just over the first notch. So my spindle turning was beyond the six. The balance bull blank was almost at four. I'm barely past the first notch here and I'm seeing vibration. So that gives you some idea of how and why you're going to want to change your speed based on what you're working on. These last two examples 
the balanced bull blank and this unbalanced bull blank are great, great reminders that we have to be aware of whenever we're turning, every single piece of wood we bring to the lathe is different. Even if it's cut from the same tree in the same manner and the same shape and size, each piece is going to be different and we have to treat it differently. And that means we need to pay attention to the bull blank that's on the lathe. And we don't want to, we don't want to rely on some prescribed speed, for instance. So if somebody says, well, I've turned this bull at 800 RPMs, that's, that's not really something to go by because that has nothing to do with the piece of wood that you have on your lathe. So you want to keep aware of the fact that you're going to make adjustments for what you're doing at this moment. And there is no, there is no predetermined recipe or speed rather. The other thing to keep in mind is while you're turning this bull blank, like this rough bull blank is really rough and it's going very slow, but as I take these corners off and I start shaping this more into a bull shape, it's going to become more uniform. And when it becomes more uniform, it becomes more balanced and I can increase the speed. So there again, there's no fixed speed. As I progress through this bull turning, I'm going to be able to go faster and faster until this is pretty much balanced and I'm going to be going as fast as I can go with this particular bull. So just keep in mind, we always want to remember that everything is different all the time with every single bull blank and we need to be accommodating that as we go and really paying attention to the bull blank that we have on the lathe. Now let's really focus on the difference between a small diameter spindle turning and a larger bull blank. I'm going to start by marking the center point of this bull blank. So there's our center axis. Everything's rotating around that axis. Now if we look at a spindle turning, a spindle turning may only be this wide, out to about right here. Okay, that, that small radius basically makes a rotation in a very slow speed. Okay, now compare that to out here, which is the outside. This is about a nine inch bowl. So the nine inch rim of this, in order for it to make the same single revolution, has to travel all of this distance, all the way around. And that's what makes the difference here. And what we have is we have rotational inertia, meaning this bull blank is going to turn into a flywheel, or it's going to have stored energy in it. And we, that's why we have to be careful and we have to keep the speed down, not just from a practical standpoint or danger standpoint, but for a smooth cut standpoint. If we get going too fast, that extra energy and that rotational inertia is going to cause the lathe to vibrate, which is going to make it hard to make a smooth cut. Plus, if the bull comes off, it's going to become very dangerous. Or if a piece of the wood comes off, it's going to become very dangerous. So we need to keep that speed within realm, into a, in a realm that's going to be safe. Now, to understand this, the difference between this small rotation here and this longer or faster rotation out here, I've got a, an example that I want to show you. It's kind of fun. Check this out. Okay, this stake in the ground is going to represent the center axis of the lathe. And... What I'm going to demonstrate right now is what the rotation looks like for a small spindle piece. So let's imagine that spindle piece is two inches in diameter or five centimeters, and we're going to make that one step. All right. So when the spindle rotates around the lathe, this is all it has to do. That's one rotation. Now, let's take a look at a 10 inch bull blank, and that would be about 25 centimeters. Let's mark this off. All right, now let's see what that looks like. Okay. All right. Hopefully that helps illustrate the 
speed of the outside of the bull compared to the inside or a smaller spindle turning. You saw how little time it took for that smaller rotation to get around and how much energy I had to expend to get around the outside of that 10 inch, what we're demonstrating is a 10 inch diameter bull. Now, scale that back down to the bull and essentially a two inch diameter spindle is tra at a thousand RPMs on the lathe is traveling at about 11 miles per hour. A 10 inch bull at a thousand RPMs is traveling at almost 60 miles per hour. So there's a huge difference. The bull blank and the width of it and the inertia creates all this extra energy. And that's why we have to slow down the bull blanks compared to the spindles because of the outside diameter of the bull and the speed of which it's turning. Okay, so as you can see by that example that it takes a lot more time or a lot more speed to get the outside of a bull around at the same time it takes to get the inside around. Remember, they're doing the same rotation or RPMs, except the outside of the bull is, is running a lot faster than the inside of the bull. We have to be aware of that at all times. And what that means is the bigger the bull, the slower we need to make the lathe to, in order to keep it safe. Now, there are a couple rules of thumb. The first rule of thumb is don't turn over a thousand RPMs. Now, why a thousand RPMs? Well, for whatever reason, bull blanks, and of course it depends on the size of the bull blank and the weight of the, the bull itself, but in general, if you're turning over a thousand RPMs and something comes loose, if a piece of wood breaks off of that wood, or if the bull blank itself comes loose, it has a chance of going up and it has a chance of coming up at your face or your torso, and that's not a good thing. However, if you're turning under a thousand RPMs, the bull blanks typically will go to the floor. And if you want an example of this, you can check out my other video called The Nutty Bowl, where I actually had a bull blank come loose and came off and I knew it was going to come off but I did it anyway and it went to the floor and you can see that because I was well under a thousand RPMs. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the second portion is uh, there's a formula to figure out the speed just to, and again it's a rough guideline but it's a formula for figuring out the maximum speed for a particular bull blank and that is to use the number 9000 divided by the diameter of the bull in inches. All right, so if you're in metric, so that's about two and a half centimeters is equals one inch. So you're gonna need to make the conversion for that. So if you have a nine inch bowl like we have right here, this nine inch bowl, you take 9,000 divided by nine and you get 1,000. So a nine inch bowl is right at that 1,000 RPM maximum. So if we stay at 1,000 or under, we're fine. Now, if you go up to a 10 inch bowl, now you're, you take 9,000, divided by 10, you're at 900 RPMs. You see how this is working. If you have a 15 inch bowl, then you go 9,000 divided by 15 and you're at 600 RPMs. So with a 15 inch bowl, you shouldn't be getting up into the seven, eight, 900 or anywhere near a thousand RPMs because you've got that rotational inertia is tremendous. But you're gonna see that first in your lathe most likely because your lathe is probably gonna start reacting. Which brings up another topic is, is just common sense. If you get your lathe going and it seems like something's going to break loose and it's just making all kinds of noise and it's going crazy, you obviously have it going way too fast. You should not be seeing vibration and you shouldn't hear, it shouldn't sound intimidating. Now, I understand that when you guys first start turning, and I was the same way, if you've got a bull blank going up to as fast as it can go safely, it can be a little bit intimidating. But after you've turned a few bulls, you're going to understand what speed is appropriate. And you're going to know when you've got the lathe up way too fast. So again, use these rules of thumb, and it's going to give you a good guideline. Now, you may have times when you can go a little bit faster, a little bit slower, and that's fine. But for general, in general, these are guidelines. I'm turning with the Robust Sweet 16 lathe, and this is an older model that doesn't have an RPM readout. The newer ones have an RPM readout. So you may have picked up what I was doing earlier when I was starting this lathe. Again, I start off with the lathe that's set to zero, the speed set to zero. And the only thing I'm doing is I'm increasing the, the speed and I'm looking for ro ro or vibration anywhere. Okay, so I can see up here, I'm getting a little vibration in the headstock. 
and I'm getting a little vibration up here in the lights, okay? And of course, they're gonna have a little bit of vibration there. So I, and right there, I'm really picking up some vibration. So you can see the vibration right here happening. All I do is that point is just back the speed down. Now, if you have part of your lathe maybe is not not setting properly and it's not anchored properly, you may be getting a vibration. Sometimes you can go past that the speed where it's vibrating and it will stop vibrating. It's almost like there's a harmonic resonance going on. And it's this is going pretty good and it's going really fast around four. I know I can get really smooth cuts from it at this point and I don't have much vibration at the, at the, at the bowl area of this. But typically I'll back it down a little bit. That's all I'm doing, okay? The lays that I started turning on did have RPM readouts, but I caught myself constantly trying to get up to 1,000 RPMs without really paying attention to the bull blank. So quite honestly, this lathe without the RPM readout on it is actually really nice because it forces me to become more in tune with what I'm turning and, and paying attention to what I'm doing versus just picking a particular number and setting it there. So on the top end, Let's, on the top end of this, we know we don't, on, on top speed, we know we don't want vibrations to occur. We want to avoid vibrations. So let's say that I have this going too slow. What's wrong with going too slow? Well, as you might guess, it's going to be difficult to make a good cut. If I were to go to, I have the lathe turning slow like this, and if you look, I've got it clear down to number one right here. If I've got that going at that speed and I try to make a, a, a push cut, well, believe it or not, I was pretty much on bevel for that whole cut. But what I was doing, what was happening was the bull gouge was being pushed forward faster than the wood was coming around to be cut. So I'm basically cutting grooves into this wood surface. And you can see that. It looks like an old vinyl record. You can see all the, the grooves that were applied. Plus, I went across the center too, too quickly. If we remember from our example, especially the overhead example outside, as we, the outside of this bull is moving the fastest and it's slowing down as we progress. So we actually have to change the pace of the bull gouge at the center. When it gets to the center, it's barely moving. It's moving very slow. So we have to slow down our pace dramatically. Now, let's say this was a large bull blank and the speed that I have right now on the lathe is as fast as I can safely turn it. So what can I do? In that case, what I need to do is I need to slow down the pace of the bull gouge. So watch, I'm gonna make this cut, but I'm gonna make it a lot slower now. Now, what I was doing is I'm allowing enough time for the wood to come around and be cut cleanly by this by the bowl gouge. Now, of course, this is a smaller bowl blank, so all I really need to do is bring the speed up. So if you're seeing what if you're seeing tool marks, but you're actually riding the bevel and you're not on the tool tip, because most tool marks are made from not being on bevel and dragging the tool tip across the the top or across the surface. If you want to learn more about riding the bevel, check out my video on riding the bevel. But if you're riding the bevel and you're seeing these grooves in here, there's a chance that your pace is too fast or the rotation of the bowl is too slow. So in that case, speed up the bowl and you can keep your pace the same. But remember when you get to the middle, you got to slow down. getting slower and slower and slower and slower and what, what I'm doing here it sounds like it seemed almost like exaggeratively slow but remember how slow that center is moving and all I'm doing is letting the cutting edge of the bull gouge cut that instead of ripping out the fibers if you see ripped out fibers on either side of your bull on the bottom or on the inside it's probably because your pace is too fast across that center and you're not giving the the tool enough time to make all of the cuts because remember how slow that is in the middle. You do need to be aware that there are some turners out there that subscribe to the faster the speed is, the cleaner the cut is, even for bull blanks. There's, there's at least one well-known turner out there that does that. And 
quite honestly, there really is no need to get the speed up over a thousand RPMs, I don't believe. If you want to do that, that's fine. That's your personal choice. But I think keeping myself safe, keeping the equipment safe, and keeping the bull safe are a little bit higher priority. I've got hundreds and hundreds of bulls under my belt and I haven't had to turn over a thousand RPMs. There's really no need to be going that fast. Yes, you can get a smoother cut, but you're putting yourself in a much more dangerous situation. So keep that in mind when you're turning. So to sum up, basically what we're doing is we're looking for the Goldilocks effect. We don't want the bull to be turning too fast, creating vibrations, which makes the cut a little bit difficult to handle and it becomes potentially dangerous. But on the other hand, we don't want to be turning so slow that it's difficult to make clean passes with the bull gouge. Instead, we want the speed to be right in the middle. We want it to be just right, just like Goldilocks. We want it, we want it to be find the just right speed. And the thing to keep in mind is that's always changing. The more you turn and the more balanced you make your bull blank as you progress, you can speed up the, the lathe and you can make it go a little bit faster. But keep it within the realm of the parameters that we talked about. The other thing too to keep in mind is every single piece of wood is different. Everything you turn is different. I don't know if you guys have ever seen like the world's largest wood turned bull. It's about a 15 foot diameter segmented bull and they actually use a tractor as the lathe to rotate it. Well, if you do the math on that, that rotation shouldn't be more than 50 RPMs. That means that it's making one rotation in, in just over a second. All right, it doesn't sound very fast, but if you think about a 15 foot circle and that coming, that's about three meters or five meters rather. Yeah, about five meters or five yards, a little, little, a little less than five meters. If you can imagine that coming around the speed at one rotation per second, I think it would be pretty intimidating, but that's the safe speed so that it doesn't create vibration and you can actually make smooth cuts. So, Keep that in mind, everything is different all the time and we're just kind of looking for that sweet spot where we can get the speed up to make a nice smooth cut, but not too far and not too slow. That's the Goldilocks effect. Now, if you have an RPM readout on your lathe, that's great and that's fine to use that, but don't become dependent on that. Instead, get used to looking at your bull blank and really kind of becoming attuned to it while you're turning. Do yourself a favor, take this challenge. I, I challenge you to this. If you do have an RPM readout on your lathe, put a piece of tape over it, maybe a post-it note so you can't see it. Because I know when I turned with a lathe that had an RPM readout, it was a real common practice to go and look at that all the time and think, oh, I'm at that same number, so I should be okay. Instead, pay attention to your bull blank. And for fun, go back and when you've got everything turning smoothly with the right speed and where you're making nice cuts, go back and peel back that tape and take a look and see what the speed is. It might be faster, it might be slower than what you were turning before. Um, leave me a comment below. I'd be interested to find out if you, if you take this challenge and you find out if you're actually turning faster or slower by just by paying attention to your bull blank. I'd be very curious to find out what you discover with that. I hope this video helps illustrate for you that there are a lot of things we need to take into consideration when we adjust the speed. And when I mean adjust, I simply mean that. As we progress through a turning from start to finish, we're going to keep adjusting that speed, usually making it faster so that we can make smoother cuts. But pay attention to everything that's going on and you're going to have a much better experience turning versus trying to just set your lathe to one speed and go with that. So I'm hoping this video has helped you out. And if it has, do me a huge favor, click that like button and subscribe. And leave me a comment. Let me, know, let me know what you did prior to this as far as lathe speed and what you're gonna do now. And if you've taken the tape challenge to tape over your RPM readout, let me know what you've discovered about your turning habits. I'll be very curious to, to learn. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has helped you. And as always, happy turning. Thank you.